Tonight at 11, sisters begging for answers in their brother's death. We need closure. Right now we are just in a, at a loss. A student from Metro Atlanta gunned down while away at college. A brand new forecast track just came in from the National Hurricane Center, adjusting the track and intensity of Tropical Storm Erica. I'll have the potential impacts on Georgia. Also tonight, carjacked at Whole Foods. Something stopped my door and I looked over and he goes, get out of the car. The woman who didn't go down without a fight. And thanks a lot for joining us. Our top story tonight, sisters searching for answers and the mysterious death of their brother. He was killed in a hit and run on the interstate, and now the hunt is underway to track down drivers and witnesses. All right, Kevin Rosen has the story, all new tonight at 11. James Addison's family has questions that are eating away at them. Why was he out here in Temple, Georgia, on this busy interstate about 40 miles from his home Wednesday morning? And why did at least two drivers hit him and then run? We need closure. Right now we are just in a, at a loss. Addison was 43 years old, the older brother of Jennifer Christian and Andrea Holmes. His family has reached out to us to tell his story, to help them find answers. And it's really hard for us to deal with that unknown. We just need some closure, we need to understand what happened to our brother. Temple police say Addison was hit by several vehicles as he walked along I-20 right at the Temple exit ramp. A third vehicle that hit him, a tractor trailer, stopped, but at least two passenger cars that hit him first didn't. That's very painful for somebody to hit a body and do not stop to see that they hit something. Even if you hit a dog, somebody would stop. Even more troubling is the mystery of why Addison was on the interstate more than 40 miles from his Atlanta home. And we pray that there's no a foul play involved or anything like that, but we just need to know what's going on because there's, there's no reason for him to be out there. And no reason for anyone to run after hitting him. And if the two cars that hit him are unwilling to come forward, Temple Police believe there are other witnesses who saw those two vehicles and they're hoping they'll call police. In Temple, I'm Kevin Rosen for 11 Alive News. Tonight, the GBI is investigating the deadly shooting of a Savannah State University student who grew up in DeKalb County. 22-year-old Christopher Starks was shot in the chest at the student center last night, and authorities are still looking for that gunman at this hour. Earlier today, dozens of students murdered or mourned the murder of their classmate and joined hands in prayers you can see there. And tonight, Starks' younger brother, who plays football at DeKalb's Miller Grove High School, took to the field while still mourning his death. Yeah. Jeremy Campbell was there. On the field tonight against all emotional odds was Jamal Starks. He's a freshman playing on the varsity team, the same team that his late brother played on before he graduated from Miller Grove High School. And tonight, Jamal, number 26, took the field less than 24 hours after his big brother Christopher was shot to death outside the student union at Savannah State. It seems impossible that his brother could play, but tonight he did. A testament to how inspiring Christopher was to his family and to his team. The last words that he had with Chris was, uh, play your game tonight. I love you and I'll be there. Not only tonight, but forever. Chris was just so much bigger than football. You know, he was just so much bigger than football. He just loved life. A dedicated brother on the field tonight with the stands full of emotional support. Jeremy Campbell reporting this evening. Developing right now a motorcade carrying the body of a former Floyd County deputy is bound for Rome. 11 Alive was there as sirens rang at the downtown connector as hundreds of law enforcement officers escorted the body of 46-year-old Barry Sutton. His remains arrived at Hartsfield Jackson this evening. Sutton's remains are being returned home to Rome, heading north on 75 right now. Sutton was killed in a suicide bombing in Afghanistan while working as a contractor. And meantime, we have learned the body of the Peachtree City contractor who also died in that very same bombing will be flown to Boston. A funeral will be held there for Richard McAvoy after Labor Day, where his mom lives. He's set to be buried at Arlington National Cemetery. Tonight, all eyes are on Tropical Storm Erica, which is being blamed for at least 20 deaths in Dominica. Late today, the island's prime minister said hundreds of homes, bridges and roads have been destroyed, cut off by landslides, mudslides and flooding. 
Meantime, Florida is under a state of emergency tonight as residents spent the day sandbagging homes and stocking up on storm supplies. The 11 Alive storm trackers are closely watching her path. And Chris, uh, you just received the latest model for us. We have a new track that just came in from the National Hurricane Center just at the top of the hour. Here is what it looks like right now where you see all of the clouds in association with Erica moving over parts of uh, the Dominican Republic and Haiti. A lot of rain moving through here. The storm weakened a little bit during the evening hours. Now maximum sustained winds are at 45 miles an hour. Here is the latest information we have on it. You can see those max winds at 45 moving to the west northwest at 20 miles an hour. It is 40 miles west of Port-au-Prince right now. This is the center of the storm now about to move back over water and then it's going to encounter Cuba. As it moves in over that land, it is going to decrease its intensity. Also, it's going to experience some shear, which is really going to keep this hard to stay together over Cuba. So it's just going to go back down to a tropical depression and then emerge back over the water on Sunday morning and as it does that and moving into the Gulf of Mexico, it will become a tropical storm again. And look at this shift that we just got in from the Hurricane Center. If you'll recall last night, the storm was to the east of the peninsula. This morning it was over the peninsula of Florida. Now this is shifting more over to the west and that means it's going to spend more time over the warm water in the Gulf of Mexico. The latest has this moving into the Florida panhandle there near Apalachicola uh, late on Tuesday and then becoming a tropical depression moving into South Georgia. The farther this shifts over to the west, the more impacts it could have on us as the remnants move closer to us. We're going to talk more about that and what to expect as it comes our way coming up. Chris, thank you very much. A former Gwinnett County Sheriff's Major has until Monday to turn himself in. Today, a judge said Nicholas Neal violated the trust of the people when he used his position to put money in his own pockets. Ryan Kruger's on the story tonight. And Ryan, uh, part of the deal is that this man will never be in law enforcement again. That's right, Melissa, and that's mainly what prosecutors wanted. Uh, they don't believe that the former sheriff's major made a fortune, but they say there's no doubt he used his high rank and authority to keep to help out his side business. But you, like me, took an oath to uphold the laws of the state of Georgia. And the law clearly states you cannot be an employee of Gwinnett County and sell products to them on the side. But that's exactly what prosecutors say former Sheriff's Major Nicholas Neal was doing. He was convicted of selling car parts to the county, even though he knew it was illegal. Chief Judge Melody Snell Connor tore into Neal from the bench. It was painful to see my elected sheriff on the stand with one of his employees. Um, it's not what I would want for Gwinnett County because it's not just where I live and work. It's my home. Neal was visibly defeated when he found out he'll spend the next two years behind bars. The first two to be served in confinement. Neal's wife and pastors asked for no jail time so that he could help the community and care for his elderly parents. But Judge Connor said what's wrong is wrong. I know a lot of people will suffer from it, but I think it's the appropriate thing to do. Neal will also serve eight years of probation. He was granted first-time offender status, but he will not be able to carry a gun once he's out of jail. Neal will turn himself in to the Gwinnett County Jail by 7.30 Monday morning, or else, the judge said, rest assured, there will be a significant amount of harm. DeMarco? All right, Ryan, thank you for that report. It is a story that captured the hearts of many in the metro area. A newborn baby abandoned on a stranger's front porch. And tonight, we have learned baby Harlan is heading home with a foster family until police and defects can determine what happens next. Meantime, Atlanta police still have no idea who the mother is. We don't know what her story is. We want to hear what she has to say. Just tell us your story. Now, police say it is not yet clear if charges will be filed against the baby's mother. Still ahead, a woman carjacked in the middle of the day in a Buckhead Whole Foods. She actually bit back. And I bit him, and I tried to push the box cutter up towards his face. I don't know if I got him or not. She gave him a good fight. All right, plus it is Friday night. Time to put up your wands. Team 1-1 is standing by with your high school football highlights coming up in sports. And if you missed our 11 Alive special earlier this evening, Katrina, 10 years later, we invite you to watch it on 11alive.com. We share stories of survival and hope and the impact of that catastrophic storm and what it had on Atlanta as well. That's on 11alive.com. 
The man accused of carjacking a college student at the Buckhead Whole Foods is incarcerated tonight after he crashed during a police chase. And the victim tells 11 Alive tonight she was the wrong person to mess with. 22-year-old Morgan Watson walked out to her 1996 Range Rover in the parking lot of the Whole Foods Market in Buckhead. That's when a man pulled out a box cutter demanding she get out of the car, but she fought back. So he pulled me out of the car after that and I held onto his arm. So he slashed me with the box cutter a few times and I bit him and I tried to push the box cutter up towards his face. I don't know if I got him or not. I don't know what he thought he was doing, but he picked the wrong girl. All right, that's obvious. 49-year-old Don O'Brien ultimately got away with that car but ended up flipping the car on I-75 at the Cleveland Avenue exit. He faces a slew of charges tonight. It's not clear when he'll face a judge. New this evening out of Rockdale County, a plea from the sheriff's office to help a dozen victims who were robbed of everything they own. Deputies say Lena Clark was arrested Tuesday for running an illegal personal home care and exploiting the disabled adults she was supposed to be working for. Deputies say they need everything from food to clothes, things like toothpaste and shampoo to help care for these victims. Deputies say the donations can be made at the Rockdale County Sheriff's Office. Tonight we remember the courageous life of civil rights activist Amelia Boynton Robinson. She passed away this week at the age of 104. 50 years ago she marched in Selma, Alabama alongside Congressman John Lewis and the Reverend Hosea Williams the Georgia native was nearly beaten to death fighting for African Americans to have the right to vote. President Obama says to honor the legacy of an American hero like Amelia Boynton requires only that we follow her example. She will be missed. Also tonight, a special congratulations to three of our very own esteemed colleagues here at 11 Alive. Jeff Hellinger, Jerry Carnes, and 11 Alive executive producer Jeff Reed were all honored for their distinguished careers. They were all inducted into the Natus Silver Circle and join a group of accomplished broadcasters. That's National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences. That's Natus. The award is only presented to journalists with at least 25 years in the industry and honors their dedication and all of their success. So Jeff, Jeff, and Jerry. Mm -hmm. All Jeff. Congratulations. Congratulations and all great guys. We're so proud of all of them. Yeah. All right, let's get and turn it over now to our chief meteorologist who is uh, tracking tropical storm Erica and what it could mean for us here in Georgia. Chris. Well, we have to watch this very closely because the track keeps shifting a little bit and that could change the impacts on us. Let's first talk about tomorrow where we are going to see some rain here. It has nothing to do with Erica. We're going to see a, about a 40% chance for showers on Saturday, not an all day rain event. We're talking about just some scattered showers developing in the afternoon, a low in the morning of 70 and then by afternoon we'll top off at about 85 degrees. Here is the forecast track showing tonight just a few clouds around and in the morning we're going to see a pretty good coverage of clouds. We'll see a few breaks in those clouds at times during the lunchtime hour and once we get into the afternoon you can see that we're not going to have a real big coverage of rain. We're just talking about some of the spotty showers that will be with us mainly in the afternoon and evening hours is when we'll see that better chance for some of these scattered showers to move into our area. On Sunday the rain chance is up a little more to 50% and we're talking about more than just the afternoon variety. We can see some showers even early in the morning on Sunday, lunchtime hour after lunch, a few scattered showers, but we should see some drier air coming in late Sunday and into Monday. Monday is actually looking a little bit drier and a lot of our forecast for next week depends on this. This is tropical storm Erica. It brought in a lot of rain over Puerto Rico. It was bearing down on uh, uh, parts of the Dominican Republic and now Haiti with all the clouds and the heavy rain that's moving through there and the tropical storm force winds. However, those winds died down a little bit today as it was encountering land here over his Spaniola. Now 45 mile an hour winds moving west northwest at 20 miles an hour. The location of the center of the storm is about 40 miles west of Port au Prince, Haiti. It's going to move out over water briefly tonight and then encounter Cuba. And as it does that, it is going to weaken back to a tropical depression on Saturday during the day because it's not only encountering land, but also some shear in the atmosphere that'll help to make it weaken a little bit. Holding as a tropical depression early on Sunday. But then look at this. The latest track we have from the Hurricane Center keeps this out over the Gulf a little bit and that will allow it to maintain tropical storm strength as it moves through the Gulf of Mexico, approaching the Florida Panhandle by late Tuesday into early Wednesday. Again, that is just the current track we have. What I want you to notice, though, is this shift that we're seeing in the cone that's moving a little more over to the west. Last night we were talking about it just along the Florida coast and then over Florida, just as a tropical storm. Now this is keeping it over into the Gulf of Mexico. And if 
if that shift continues over to the west as it moves into uh, South Georgia and possibly into Metro Atlanta, that could increase the impacts that it would have on us. Here are the latest in the spaghetti models. Again, most of these keep this just to the uh, east of us, but there are a few outliers that move this over the panhandle and get closer to us. So that's why we have to watch this storm very closely for the potential impacts, not only the track, but also the intensity of that. And of course, we'll keep you posted over the weekend with Tracy and Sam. We've got a 40% chance for showers Saturday, 50% chance on Sunday, then down to a 20% chance on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday with highs in the 80s. And then Thursday and Friday, a lot of that forecast now a 30% chance for a shower. That'll depend on what happens with the remnants of Erica. In the next weekend, hey, it's the holiday weekend next weekend. The potential for a couple of scattered showers with highs in the upper 80s, and it looks like a rather humid holiday upon us. Stay with us. We've got more with our Team 1 1 coverage and Jeff Hollinger up next. Life move. Tonight is your night. Play football. And nobody disrespect us, bro. Go, baby. Well, here we are. Hi, everybody. It's Friday night. Time to put up your ones. Team 1-1 one, one front and center. A lot of great action on this night. Don't forget, we have a 30-minute show that comes on at 1030 on the ATL, but we're going to try and jam in as much as possible right here, right now. We begin with the game that so many people have been waiting for after more than 131,000 votes. It was a tight race. Our game of the week, Douglas County visiting Alexander, here we go. Look at this. What a place to be. Perfect weather. Alexander's Daytrick Harrington. Here he is coming near side. Number two, cutting, choosing, finding some daylight. He is off and gone. 95 yards for a touchdown sprint. They won't touch him. It was 14-0 with Douglas County scores. Malik Oliver, the jump pass, finding Joshua Same. 69 yards to cut the lead to 14-7. Joe Namath, when he was at Alabama and with the Jets, did that jump pass. That's a great look and play if you can execute it. But too much from Baylor Whitfield, the Alexander quarterback, finding Justin Hall, and he's gone. See the number that he's wearing? You see the 1-1? One, one? That's where it's at. That's it. Alexander 42, Douglas County 20. David Wilkinson is at the game tonight. Our seniors stepped up, mm -hmm. and our defense stepped up and made some good plays when they needed to, some very good plays. But we got to get back in the film room and uh, get back to work. We got a long season. All right, a long season indeed from our friends at Born to Compete. Alpharetta visiting Milton. Matthew Downing of Alpharetta connecting with Nick Carlton at 20-yard touchdown catch. Now for Milton, it's David Moore completing 42 yards, plenty of time. There is a penalty marker, but this one is good. Wide open. He reels it in and makes that catch. Then it's looking for Mike Near. Near, far side, has it, takes the hit, holds on. Alpharetta over Milton tonight, 24 21. Big time private school battle. You know about the tradition of Westminster and love it. Who will win this storied contest? Westminster Zoy Malcolm. 55 yards, Malcolm not in the middle. He is in the end zone, 7-7. Seven, seven. The game is all tied up. Westminster now a little trickery. Here goes the fake field goal. Keller Harper, the shovel pass TD. Westminster up 20-7 to seven there, and they hang on. Tough one. You would expect that to be tough and close. It was Westminster 26, Lovett 23. St. Pius in Roswell for a big matchup against the Titans of Blessed Trinity. Here we go. Blessed Trinity, the play action. Connor Davis looking for J.D. Bertrand. Has him number 16. Touchdown. And the 1-1s one are living proof of success. Blessed turn, uh, Trinity here with her backs against the wall. Pius's Winston Ostricker knocking the ball loose. Recovered by Pius. Blessed Trinity is your winner tonight. 17-6. Indicator, the Bulldogs hosting Woodward Academy. The Bulldog defense is tough. DeAndra Wilson there sacking the quarterback. Third and 22. The Eagles want to go deep. Ryan Glover to Kyle Level. 
Man, oh man, nice catch and grab. That's good for a first down. And that would set up a touchdown. Later, it is Decatur's Quintarvius Eagle picked off by Jeffrey Hubbard for the touchdown. And the final goes to Woodward Academy, 34-70. Alma mater of David Wilkinson. Gwinnett matchup at Tally Johnson Field. Central Gwinnett hosting Collins Hill. Major Bellamy Jr., the touchdown for Central Gwinnett. He is psyched, 6 nothing. Central Gwinnett. Now it's Monty Horn finding Justin McCauley. Wide open for an Eagles touchdown. He looked like Harold Carmichael in that Eagles helmet. Do you remember that? Carmichael, the big tall receiver for the Eagles in the NFL. Nigel Adams, his third interception. He had three interceptions in one game. Are you kidding me? He brings it down to the five. Say it again. Third INT for Nigel Adams. And 35-29 Central Gwinnett, a winner with Collins Hill. Single A Eagles landing Christian Academy playing at 5A Stockbridge. Here we go. What would happen? Malachi Brown finding Jalen Holston. Holston picks up yards after the catch. 53 yards, 7-0 Stockbridge. Then the Eagles landing, going forward on fourth down. Look out for Chris Hall and David Brown with the stop. Man, they bring him down. There's just no room there. Tigers back to work. Malik Turner taking the handoff. And the far sideline, those Miami Hurricane-style uniforms just say speed. Stockbridge, a winner over Elka, 28-21. to In Cobb, Kennesaw Mountain at Sprayberry. Mustangs in jackets. Sprayberry's quarterback, Jared Eccles, fumbles, but then picks it back up. He runs for a big gain, finally brought down. Eccles now looking for some room, but, man, it closes in a hurry. Kennesaw Mountain has it. Eccles here going deep, firing down the middle. How's that not interference? Sprayberry barbecues Kennesaw Mountain tonight, 17 to 10. All right, that's some highlights. We'll take a break. Back right after this. What's up, it's your boy Salento, and I'm rocking with Team 1 1. You already know what it is. Let's go. Now watch me wear. All right, Braves hosting the Yankees tonight. Bottom of the first, Nick Swisher. Productive, sack fly to center. Cameron Maben is in him. Maybe the Braves have a chance. They're within three. Brian McCann back at Turner Field. Oh, no, not Brian McCann. Not that Brian McCann. A three-run shot to right field. You think he likes that? You think he enjoys that? Four RBIs for McCann on the night. Yankees win big 15-4. To borrow a line from the late Jack Buck. I can't believe what I just saw. Brian McCann with the home run. Do you, do you think that he's going to have a happy evening? All right, have a great weekend, everybody. Good night.